Hello and welcome to Edison TV. Today I'm joined by Dmitry Shashko, CEO of Nanoco. Nanoco are a developer, licensor and manufacturer of quantum dots and other uh, advanced materials. Dmitry, many thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Dan. Good to be here. Can you start by um, just introducing yourself, uh, the, the, the roles and experience that you've had prior to, to Nanoco and perhaps talk a little bit about why you joined the business? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Dan, for having me here. Uh, it's good to good to share my, my thoughts. Um, my background has been in various advanced materials for over 20 years. Uh, so I'm relatively new to quantum dots, but I'm not new. Uh, I spent most of my professional career helping various businesses grow in uh, advanced materials and associated industries, mostly in semiconductors and in the adjacent markets, such as flat panel display, uh, photovoltaic, uh, LED lighting, and uh, similar markets. My original training is in physics and in material science, uh, but uh, after that I spent about five years at McKinsey, uh, working mostly with chemical and industrial companies on growth strategies. And with that background, uh, I subsequently spent about 20 years uh, studying at Honeywell and a variety of other companies, large and small, um, some of them public, some others are private equity or venture capital owned companies. So I've seen a variety of businesses and business models in advanced materials. And um, the specific learning about quantum dots is something I was focusing in my last uh, few months as I started with Nanoco. The reason I was interested in the job is very simple. I absolutely believe in Nanoco's potential uh, to become the leading supplier of this um, really uh, breakthrough technology uh, to different markets. But historically, the company struggled to develop a viable commercial business. Uh, in many ways, it's, uh, in my view, a diamond in the rough. Uh, the task of growing the business, which has sound technology, uh, but didn't develop for one reason or another, good commercial strategy is, is something which I enjoy doing. And you could say this is my specialty. Um, and that's what I saw in the company, and I was very excited to join. And uh, uh, in the last few months, that feeling only uh, became stronger. All right. And now turning towards a couple of the recent developments with Nanoco, um, you've had um, the launch of litigation against LG, but, and then today you've, we've seen the um, announcement of the new JDA. Uh, maybe maybe discussing the latter of those first. Can you talk about the, the new joint develop, development agreement? Yeah, um, we see a lot of interest from various companies, large and small, uh, to uh, bring this uh, quantum dot-based infrared image sensing technology into the world. Uh, in this case, we teamed up with a large Asian uh, chemical companies. In its makeup, uh, this second JDA is very similar to the first one. Um, they both target uh, quantum dot based image sensors. Uh, in both cases, our partners are focusing on heavy metal free materials. Uh, that is also our specialty. While we have um, lead containing uh, quantum dots in our portfolio, those were the first to see the uh, real world applications. We are developing and uh, uh, improving our portfolio on the lead free. That includes indium arsenide and indium antimonide based quantum dots. That is exactly the type of chemistry which our partners want to uh, bring into the consumer applications first and foremost. Right. And exploring your, your progress in sensing more 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 generally, now, you've now got two JDA partners. Uh, you talked about the applications there, but can you talk about the key milestones that we should expect from, from those developments? Yeah. In, in each of those programs, we usually have a well-structured approach uh, with milestones and uh, with uh, performance targets. Uh, which will enable the sensor with the right functionality, reliability, uh, and uh, deliver on, on customer expectations. In each of those cases, the process of development is iterative. We develop a critical material, which becomes part of the sensor, but there are many other elements in that sensor which all need to work in concert. In the end, the performance of the ultimate device is not just driven by quantum dots, but, but by every other layer in the system. Uh, so we uh, rapidly iterate our materials, immediately put them into the sensor structure, test the performance, uh, and repeat that process uh, dozens and dozens of times. But at the conclusion of this process, we have a well-defined material system, 
uh, for each of the layer of the sensor, as well as the uh, process, how the entire structure comes together. That becomes our low volume process, which then needs to go through the process of scaling up uh, and building of uh, enough sensors uh, to provide the necessary reliability testing. That could be a separate phase, uh, can also take you know another year or two, depending how uh, large is the uh, data package which needs to be developed. In the end, uh, for the uh, joint development agreements which we have right now, those are targeting consumer applications with rather high volume, and they may take a little bit longer uh, to bring it to the high volume stage. We have a number of other industrial partners uh, who are targeting uh, defense, surveillance, uh, and quality control applications. And those are smaller companies working on small volume markets, but they're moving very, very fast. Uh, for future development of Nanoco, we would like to maintain that portfolio of companies large and small working on different end-use applications because that also de-risks uh, our own development work. Interesting. Uh, and then turning towards display, yeah. I guess the big news over the last few days was the launch of litigation um, against LG. Can you can you talk about that? Yeah, uh, it, we simply continue to do what we said we will do. Um, we had a successful outcome uh, with Samsung. Samsung ended up uh, purchasing a license to all the quantum dot uh, related technology uh, for flat panel display. And uh, when Samsung launched uh, quantum dot enabled uh, TVs, uh, QLED configuration, as they call it, uh, they were absolutely the dominant player, perhaps well in excess of 90% market share. But that was a few years ago. Since then, uh, many other players developed this technology. It is uh, in the mainstream right now, not just across televisions uh, of different size, uh, but also uh, high-end monitors and uh, even uh, some of the notebook computers are now quantum dot enabled. Uh, and in all of the cases, we are doing pretty thorough analysis to understand what technology uh, is used uh, in, in the particular device. And uh, when we find that that technology uh, is utilizing our proprietary uh, methods, uh, which, you know, which we were defending against Samsung, we take action. So this is exactly what happened uh, with uh, LG, and we will continue to identify other um, participants in the LCD market where we can establish this type of licensing uh, licensing approach with regards to uh, our technology. Um, right, and then and then looking at the whole quantum dot television um, display market in, in, in a little bit more breadth, there seems to be a bit of a pickup in terms of interest in cabin-free quantum dots out, outside of Europe and in Asia. Um, can you help us, I guess, calibrate that opportunity for Nanoka, both in terms of you know, how quickly could this happen and, and how big is that market opportunity? Yeah, you're, you're correct, Dan. Um, it is a early emerging trend. Now, by our um, calculations, Today, approximately half of the LCD market uh, with quantum dot uh, layer in it is still cadmium-based. And the producers of those cadmium-based uh, quantum dot TVs are mostly based in China and some of them in Taiwan. Whereas in Korea and in Japan and in other uh, geographies, transition to cadmium-free has been fully complete. Um, I think the trend will continue, but it would be slow. You're correct that it is driven by the European regulation, by Rojas uh, ruling, which uh, is currently in place and expectations that will continue to tighten. Um, that leaves suppliers of cadmium televisions with a dilemma. Either they supply um, televisions with very low cadmium content uh, so they can fit into the regulations, then they under deliver on the color performance, or they simply avoid the European market. I believe most of Asian players are watching these developments very closely because what happened historically, Europe, uh, European Union specifically, always has been more aggressive in introducing those environmental regulations, but other geographies of the world tend to follow, sometimes with a delay. Um, and I think this is likely to happen here as well. So we interact with companies in, in Asia who see this trend, and we begin to do some work with them to convert current configurations from cadmium-based to cadmium-free. This process will not be fast, uh, but uh, we believe it will continue to shift market share in the LCD market uh, away from cadmium towards the cadmium-free quantum dots, which Nanoco pioneered 
and has the patented technology around. Get you. And we've all we've always considered quantum dots to be sort of a platform technology, if you like. The, the range of potential applications is is is, is very wide. Near term focus has, has been on display and sensing, but of all of those other applications, is there, is there anything there that's exciting you? Yeah, uh, without a doubt. Uh, by far the biggest focus for us right now is on image sensor just because so many different companies are pursuing so many different applications all at once. But uh, right behind that is uh, some of the work we started to do in photovoltaic. Um, that's a relatively mature industry, uh, but some of the additional improvements to this technology appear to have a really strong value proposition. Uh, and the specific application, which is of great interest to us, is so-called down converting layers. Those are the layers which take the less useful part of the solar spectrum and they convert it to the more useful part when it comes to electricity generation. It's a very simple concept, uh, but with uh, previous generations of technology, nobody had a good recipe how to do it well. It appears that quantum dots can do the job. Uh, and uh, we are now engaged with uh, some of the leading photovoltaic companies. Uh, again, it's going to be a uh, joint development process. Uh, first, we will prototype on a small scale, but if and when we are successful to deliver uh, the technical performance, uh, we expect this technology will go on a pretty large scale. Um, I think in a few years from now, it may overtake uh, flat panel display as the largest application by volume, uh, but there's still technical work to be done for sure. Great. It'd be, see, it'd be great to see another leg to the to the yeah, growth story. Yeah. You've got the CDX process ongoing, the, the process of finding a, a buyer for the operational assets of the business. Um, can you, as far as you're able, talk about that and the, the key milestones on that process? Yeah, we, we follow pretty well-defined, a uh, well-structured process. Uh, we started uh, the process uh, in the first quarter, calendar quarter of this year. And by now we have completed what I would call phase one, which means we put together all the materials describing the company. Uh, we had a significant outreach campaign well north of uh, 200 different companies uh, with potential interest uh, to make an investment in Nanoco, covering every relevant geography uh, of on the world map, as well as a number of different asset classes, uh, strategic investors, financial investors, and anywhere in between. That process is now largely complete, and uh, we expect uh, to start the phase two, where a small group of companies have been down selected and they would be submitting their preliminary bids or indications of interest. Uh, this process is underway right now, and we expect to complete it sometime in the second calendar quarter. And uh, if everything goes well, uh, we expect to have um, to have a deal uh, sometime before end of the calendar year. Now, in M and A, success is never guaranteed. But I'm encouraged uh, by the fact how strong the engagement has been so far and uh, how well we or organized the process and provided access to all the relevant information to potential investors. That part tells me that uh, we should be well on track to uh, deliver a good proposal uh, sometime later this year. Dimitri, um, hoping it all goes well with the process. Never a dull moment with Nanoco, but many th thanks for coming in and, and running through all the things that are going on. Absolutely. Thank you, Dan.